We interrupt our regularly scheduled programming with an urgent request that every person watching this channel immediately open your Bible and get ready to understand it. Welcome to The Way, The Truth, and The Life, a program designed to help you better understand your Bible. And now, here is your host, Ken Wade. Hello, friends. Welcome to The Way, The Truth, and The Life broadcast. We're so happy you dialed our way so we could share with you some of the wonderful promises from the Word of God. The Holy Bible. Today we're going to go to the Psalms, Psalm 91, and share with you some very comforting messages regarding the church and our relationship to the Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. I sort of look at television as almost an opportunity of knocking on people's door. And Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So just look at this as a little opportunity of Jesus coming to your door and knocking on it and saying, might I have a moment of your time? Might I interest you in some spiritual food and some wonderful, wonderful insights into our Heavenly Father's Holy Word? Now, if you would, open your Bible with me to Psalm the 91st chapter and read with me. You'll get a greater blessing. Psalm 91, starting with verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Once again, let's read it together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, what does that mean? He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. How could we presum be so presumptuous as to think we could dwell in the secret place of the Most High? Well, we couldn't unless the Most High showed us how to do it. What does he mean, dwell in the secret place of the Most High? You remember in the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle of Moses, and inside that court was the tabernacle building itself with the holy and the most holy. And only the priest could go into that holy and most holy room, and in that holy there was a candlestick and the showbread and the incense altar. We, dear friends, as Christians, are dwelling inside that secret place. The place that no one in Israel could look into. The place that no one could see into but the high priest. And the under priests got a glimpse of it. And so Jesus tells us, why don't you follow me through that first veil into the holy? where you'll have the golden candlestick of light and the table of showbread for your food and the beautiful incense altar that they uh, put the incense over the flame and it roses representing prayer. And we dwell in that secret place and that's called the secret place of the Most High. God the Father is the Most High God in all the universe. There's nothing higher than God the Father. And he invites us little microbes down here on planet Earth who are followers of his dear son Jesus to go into that secret place of the Most High. And it's a secret in more ways than one because the world knows, knows very little about it. The world goes busily rushing on to their appointments 
and their fun and their sports and their games and their discos and their dancing and their rock and roll concerts and they drink and they have fun, they think. And every event seems to be another excuse to have more beer. So the world doesn't know much about the secret place of the Most High. So from the world's standpoint, it really is a big secret. But we who have been called to follow Jesus Christ are invited to go in to a secret meeting place. And all this, of course, is spiritual. It's not a literal temple we walk into. We don't enjoy literal material things in a spiritual way. We enjoy fellowship with God. We begin to have a relationship to God. We begin to talk with God. And not only do we speak to him, he begins to give us answers for our everyday life. Us little puny microbes on planet Earth, us little human beings, God says, talk to me. Come into my secret place. And he gives us showbread to eat, the word of God. And he gives us the light of the golden candlestick uh, that's ignited by the oil of God's Holy Spirit, the olive oil that kept the lamps burning on the seven-branch candlestick or the menorah in that holy. He gives us that light, and that's the word of God. And he invites us to pray, and the incense goes up, and the smoke penetrates into the most holy, representing God's presence. Isn't it wonderful, folks, that we are invited in verse 1 of Psalm 91. Let's read it again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Abide under the shadow. He puts out his wings, and we, like the little chickens, little chicks, under the mother hen's wings, run under our heavenly father's wings of providence and answer to prayer, and he helps us through our day, and he gives us direction for our lives. We focus, we have a goal, we have a purpose for living. What many people don't have today is a purpose for living. People are down in the dumps, they call it. That's because life is full of garbage. That's why we're in the dumps of life. People don't have good and evil to choose from. Usually it's which evil shall I choose? If you give people 10 garbage cans to choose from, how can they choose good? But here, oh, praise the Lord, we have purity and holiness, and the real foundation of good, honest, pure, righteous living. The secret place of the Most High, because in that place we abide under the shadow, nothing can harm us, of the Almighty God. What a wonderful thing to know our Heavenly Father. If you don't know him, that's why we're reading this. Verse 2, Psalm 91. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. A refuge is where you run when you're in trouble. When you're in trouble. You run for that refuge. If there's a flood, you go for a high mountain. That's why many times in the Old Testament scriptures, God is likened to a beautiful high, big mountain to run to. And it says, he is my fortress. That means a fortress is a big, walled, iron-clad uh, fortress or city that keeps the enemy out. When we're with God, we don't have to worry about the enemy overtaking us. That's why we have to stay close to him because the world, the flesh, and the adversary are daily trying to bring us down into the depths and dump of the earth. 
the trashiness of people's mouths today. Holy talk is not in anymore. Good things, righteous, pure thoughts. The holiness that God meant for man. Love for one another. Not trying to get the other guy, cheat the other guy, steal from the other guy, and murder the other guy for our own aggrandizement and greed and self-lust. But God teaches us that we are in a fortress when we have him. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. And through Jesus Christ, his son, we have the secret of this relationship. Without Christ, we can't pray to God properly. We can't live for God properly because Jesus said, I am the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the only way back to God and have a relationship on a daily basis is through his son, Jesus Christ. And then in verse 3 it says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. A snare is a trap. If you want to catch a bird, a wild bird, you set a trap of some kind, and they snap them up and they catch them in the leg, or if it's a beast, they catch them with the leg, and they're trapped. But it says, he will deliver thee from the snare or trap of the fowler, the hunter, and from the noisome pestilence. My margin says the raging epidemic. Boy, are there a lot of noisome pestilences today, folks. Pestilences like crazy. The supermarket tabloids, the newspaper articles, headlines, the television, the radio. Everything's about a pestilence. All the diseases. You constantly hear about sexual diseases and cancer and all, and all these things. But the Bible says we shouldn't be filling our minds day in and day out with bad news. The Bible says, He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence, the raging epidemic. And then it says in verse 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. He'll cover thee with his feathers. The holy word of God is like a comfort, comforting blanket to us. And he uses his feathers. And what are feathers made of? Quills. What did they do with a quill? They write with them, didn't they? Isn't that how writing began? They took the quill out of a uh, they took a feather and started putting ink on the end. They wrote down. That's why God's word is like the beautiful wings of God protecting us with a thus saith the Lord. When Jesus was tempted, he used a thus saith the Lord, his God, the written word. He quoted it to Satan. So God keeps us under his wings. What better place could we be in this time of trouble and demoralization, immorality, lust and greed and sin as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Jesus foretold of a time like it would be Sodom and Gomorrah, loose living, everybody sleeping with everybody else, male and female and beast. And we don't need to be concerned about this. We must kill those desires because we're under the mighty hand of God, the wings of God protect his people. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you have, what color you are, or what your background may be. If you have the Lord God, these things are not going to affect you, and you are going to sacrifice this flesh for your beliefs in God. We cannot live after the flesh. We must crucify this mortal body with Jesus. 
We cannot live after the flesh or we'll die. The Bible makes that very plain. We must crucify this flesh and we must worship the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and we'll be clean in Christ. We're not clean by nature. We're sinners, every one of us. You're a sinner and I'm a sinner. You know it and I know it. If anybody thinks they're not a sinner, they're really a sinner. They're really deceived. But think of this being under the feathers of God and under his wings. We trust. Isn't it wonderful to have somebody you know you can count on, you know you can trust. Can you trust everybody at work, everybody in your life that you know that call themselves your friend? You know, next thing they stab you in the back. You're talking one day on the phone, and next thing they're talking to somebody else against you. You can't trust people. You trust God. He'll give you friends. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. What will be our shield? What will be our armament, as it were, in this war against the world, the flesh, and the devil? I'm not saying this is an easy way, folks. Every day we're in a warfare against evil principalities and powers and demonic uh, beings that are unseen. We're in, at war against our very flesh. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But here it says, His truth will be our shield and our buckler or protection. Dear friends, without the truth of God's word, we cannot stand in this evil day. The Apostle Paul said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the wiles of the adversary and in this evil day. Oh yes, friends, there's a devil. Don't let anybody say there's no devil. There's a devil and he's as real as the tomorrow's coming. And people are denying there's even a Satan today. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Has there ever been a day of more terrorism? Has there ever been a time when there was more fear of what next? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Oh, yes, there's people and the adversaries out sending arrows all the time your way and my way if we're believers. Now, if you're not a believer, you're in the flow of probably shooting the arrows. But if we're believers, dear friends, we've got some arrows coming at us right and left, but we don't have to fear that if we are in that fortress in the secret place of the Most High and under His wings protected by God's providential word. And I believe, I'm a believer in providence. I hope you are. Not accident and luck and fate. You know, uh, Christians are given such wonderful promises of security. And everyone today is looking for security. And that's exactly what God promises in this 91st Psalm. Total security for your life and mine if we are believers. I say if because we're not guaranteed anything unless we believe. And we must pray that God will open our eyes to believe. If we don't care and we don't have any desire to believe, He won't show us these things. Look at verse 5 and 6 of Psalm 91. If you want to read with me, some may have joined us late. Psalm 91, verse 5 and 6. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the, the destruction that wastes at noonday. Oh, yes, there are many things in this world that fate and accident and luck seemingly bring the world. But you know, God's people are not subject to accidents, fate, and luck. They are only subject to God's overruling providence, and everything that comes to the Christian's life is for their upbuilding and testing in the faith so that nothing is an accident in the Christian's life. If you're a Christian, you're a blessed person. We can't make one another Christians either. Only God calls people to follow His Son, Jesus. And only you can respond personally. No one can make another person a Christian. 
No one could look at that face of Jesus and say, I believe unless God himself reveals that he is the son of God. Jesus said to Peter, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. God himself must remove our blindness to appreciate this man, Jesus Christ. And then verse 7 of Psalm 91 says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Is that good news? A thousand fall here and ten thousand there, and I believe that's prophetic, dear friends. There are two classes in the Bible that result after the bride is called out from the world. You have a second death class or an eternally judged class that go into perdition, and you have a great multitude in the book of Revelation, and so you've got a 1,000 falling here, and you've got 10,000 falling there, but as far as the little body of Christ, the minority, those who are the true believers, it doesn't affect them. And it says in verse 8, Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. We might observe what happens to the wicked, but we don't take part in that punishment because we stand afar off in our fortress and we're standing in the secret place of the Most High and we're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty God. Do you believe this? This might sound like a fairy story to some people. Did you know that? If you're a Christian, you might believe this, but there are millions of people who don't know anything about the protective providences of our great creator and a relationship with Jesus Christ to get back to our Heavenly Father. Very few people even have that relationship. We're not to condemn anyone. We're supposed to bind up the brokenhearted as Jesus did. He said one of his missions was to bind up the broken hearts. There's a lot of broken hearts out there, friends. A lot of people are dying and relatives are saddened and a lot of sickness and a lot of struggling, and people are broke. There's never been a day when people are more hard up for money and jobs and kids and broken families and broken hearts. And all this is going to be changed one day soon. It's not going to continue like this. But in the meantime, the Christian must make their calling and election sure. We must overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. By faith, we overcome. And if you're a Christian, this program is meant to help you. If you're not a Christian, we invite you to open Psalm 91. Verse 9, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. No evil shall befall us. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Is that good news? Nothing's going to hurt you. You may not be rich. You may not have a big mansion. You may not have a, a big limo. But nothing evil, if you're a Christian, comes near your little abode or your heart or your life. Nothing can harm you. Dear friends, like Daniel in the lion's den, we're surrounded with hungry lions ready to destroy us. Let us remember to get down on our knees for deliverance. And Daniel in the lion's den was a beautiful picture of the deliverance we get from being under the providence of God. Don't forget to pray. He'll deliver you and, none, and those mouths of those lions will be closed right up. They're not going to eat you up. It says that he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and a young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. There's power in the blood, folks. There's power in a relationship with Jesus. There's providence and answer to prayer, and we want to encourage you, if you would, to order our free little booklet called Jesus the World's Savior. I'd like you to call us right now. Area code 734-480-4998 and order the free booklet, Jesus the World's Savior. A better day is coming, folks, and this booklet is made possible absolutely free of charge. 
We have people, this program, by the way, is supported wholly by voluntary contributions. We never beg for money. We give away free literature. And those people who did give are making it possible for you to have this book free. There may be someone that's totally depressed and lost and upset and maybe trying to overcome this filthy, dirty flesh and world and devil and doesn't know what to do. Write for the book. It's a beginning. It'll get you into the Word and show you why Jesus is truly the answer for mankind. He's the great priest and king. He's the great judge, the wonderful counselor. He's the one you need to change your life. And this beautiful little booklet, it's not a long booklet, but you'll learn about the Lamb of God and you'll learn that Jesus is that beautiful morning star and that he's going to set up his kingdom in the next few years, no doubt. The 1990s is the decade of destiny, folks. And we're here to tell you that God is finishing up the Church of Christ probably in the next few years, our lifetime. If you're interested and in being drawn to Jesus, this is the day of your deliverance. He's knocking at the door right now, and he's calling his final feet members to follow him, to be with him, to reign over the earth, not to just escape a hell. He's not calling you as an, uh, as an alternative. He's calling you to live with him, to be with him, to reign with him in heaven to restore this earth into the beautiful kingdom of God. Dear friends, time is short. There's not a lot more time. Time is of the essence. So if you feel a drawing, you can write me this week, and I'll send you this booklet ab absolutely free. My name is Ken Wade. It's Post Office Box 2692, Southfield, Michigan, 48037. That's Ken Wade, Post Office Box 2692, Southfield, Michigan, 48037. Or you can call me. And if you want to write down the number, it's area code 734-480-4998 and we'll send this booklet to you right away, and I think you'll get a blessing and be on your way to a further study of God's word and plan. Now, dear friends, we close out with the finishing of this psalm. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, God says. Verse 14, Psalm 91. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Dear friends, Jesus promised us eternal life and salvation. May God bless you. You have been watching The Way, The Truth, and The Life with Ken Wade. If you have enjoyed today's broadcast, please let us know by writing Ken Wade, Post Office Box 2692, Southfield, Michigan, 48037. This program has been brought to you by Christian Bible Students and is supported wholly by voluntary contributions. Our address again is Ken Wade, Post Office Box 2692, Southfield, Michigan, 48037.